I'm the High Performance Manager for New Zealand Rugby. Uh, prior to joining New Zealand Rugby, I worked for Sport and Rec New Zealand, working across a number of Olympic programs. And prior to that, um, I spent 18 odd years in, um, in IT um, across a broad range of um, uh, roles, primarily around consulting, um, performance analysis, um, business analysis, uh, strategic planning and so on. Get real clarity on what it is that you're chasing. In an all-black context, as an example, um, we're very clear on, on what we think we need to do to give ourselves the best chance of success at a Rugby World Cup. And we plot a pathway to go from where we are today to where we want to be. But we remember that as we go along that pathway, um, things change. We get a little bit smarter because we're a little bit older, a little bit wiser, and it's about our ability to adjust our plans um, to deliver that outcome. If, if you don't have clarity of purpose, clarity of, of what's critical to your success, you're going to rely on luck. If you know where you need to be, you can adapt quicker um, than the other guy or the other team to give yourselves a better chance of success. Find your leaders, not your senior players. When any team that I'm involved with who talks about senior players, I immediately get nervous um, because it lacks creativity, um, because they talk about the same things all the time. If you draw a line down the business, you can pick off who the key influences are, bring that group together, and that, that group becomes your architects. They develop purpose, they develop um, where you want to be and how you want to get there, and then they on-sell. Great teams understand why they win. So they spend an awful lot of time in terms of understanding what they've done during the week um, that's enabled them to repeat a performance, which has enabled them to continue to uh, sustain success and continue to win. New Zealand Rugby have got about 15 years of data. So if it's a kick, then it's who kicked it, what foot did they kick it with, where on the field did they kick it, um, where did the ball come from um, before they kicked it? Where did it end up? So we're looking in terms of what are the trends that are beginning to emerge in the game that we need to understand a little bit more. And the data just um, lines those things up in terms of how the athlete have a look at it and say, am I executing that skill or am I not executing it? If I was to summarise the key factors to lift performance, first is desire or hunger. W without the athlete um, um, having or being hungry for success, no amount of, um, of coaching is going to make a jot of difference. The next one is, is self-belief. Then that's followed by um, work ethic, um, being prepared to, to get down um, and dirty and work hard and push through those barriers. But in working, that work ethic, it's still about working smart in terms of understanding what the critical skills are that you need to execute under pressure. And the fifth one would be um, an awareness of, of the, the ability of your opposition. So understanding who they are, um, what they're likely to bring in a skill set perspective, in a mindset, and, um, and, and understanding in terms of where they're coming from. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. You build the team before you build the game. If your focus is the game before building the team, um, then everything will be fine as long as you're winning. But the moment you strike some adversity, there'll be carnage. Get absolute clarity. Um, on what you're chasing, what success looks like. So if I had a year to plan, I'd spend 364 days um, clarifying what I want, and then I'd operationalise it on the last day. Build your team, build your culture, um, before you worry too much about um, your game or what it is that you're trying to do from a commercial perspective.